this is probably one of the most well attended talk I've uh, given to the public uh, uh, on, uh, on these uh, issues. Okay, what are prostate problems? Before I start, let me show you where the prostate is and what is prostate. Okay, if you look at, uh, this is a urinary system, starting from the kidney, this is a urine passage, this is a bladder, the bladder is to store your urine, and the prostate is just under the bladder, just beneath the bladder, okay? It's guiding the door, the opening of the bladder. Only man has it, so woman relax, okay? So there's no chance that you're going to get prostate problem. Um, and this is a penis where the urine, you see, the urine passage where it go through the center of the prostate, okay? This is another view. The urine passage goes through the center of the prostate, and the prostate is just beneath the opening of the bladder, okay? So because of the, um, the positions and the locations, um, this is what uh, you're going to get if you, have, you run the prostate problem. You may have infection of the prostate. Usually, it comes with uh, bladder infections. Infection of the bladder leads to infection of the prostate. You may have enlargement of the prostate when you age. Enlargement of the prostate doesn't happen before the age of 50. Most of the time, when you, when you age older than the age of 50 or 60, then you have enlargement of the prostate. And this is, harm, this is benign, this is not cancerous. And of course, you have cancer of the prostate. Cancer of the prostate and enlargement of the prostate is two separate uh, conditions. And uh, one doesn't lead to the other, but often you have enlargement of prostate and prostate cancer uh, occur at the same time in elderly men. And this, this is a disease of the elderly men. So when we talk about urological cancers, we talk about not only prostate cancer, uh, which we are going to emphasize here, we talk about kidney cancer, cancer of the urine passage, the bladder, occasionally we see cancer of the penis, and uh, cancer of the testes as well. But today we are talking about prostate. As mentioned earlier, prostate cancer is the third commonest cancer affecting men, only men in uh, Singapore, in uh, Western country is a commonest. Uh, in Asian countries, it's slightly less common, but it's still very, very common. Okay, what causes cancer in general? Not only prostate cancer, but all other cancers. Cancer generally is a, is a disease uh, related to aging, and cancer mainly affects the elderly. Okay? This is so because uh, for, a, for a cancer that arises in the organs, there must be some mutations. A mutation means changes within the genes of the cells. When there are mutations or changes within the genes of the cells, the cell will just grow and grow uncontrollably and form a tumor. And a tumor means cancer, okay? And because of that, some cancers actually have some hereditary or run in the family. But most cancer doesn't do that. Most of the cancer that we encounter actually arise, what we call sporadically, um, not right in the family. This means that if your brother or your father has it, you are bound to have it. It doesn't mean that, okay? 95% of the cancer that we see, uh, including prostate cancer, doesn't run in the family. It arises because of aging. Because you live longer, the cell has been there longer, the chance that it acquire mutations, the chance that it acquire changes and form cancer, uh, become greater, okay? So there's environmental uh, factor, uh, environmental causes for cancer. And the, the chief, I mean the top among these are smoking. Okay, smoking is, is bad and it's totally preventable. Infection, inflammation can cause cancer, okay? For example, cervical cancer can even uh, uh, happen to, uh, in, in young uh, female because of infections. Uh, nutritions, okay? Too little is no good, and too much is no good. Too much of nutrition causes obesity, and obesity is uh, associated with cancers. And some of the um, environmental things like radiations, drugs can also cause cancer. So smoking, smoking is bad. Huh? Um, it's so common, a lot of people smoke, um, and it's associated with six out of 10 commonest cancer in, uh, in Singapore. So beware of what you're getting in your system if you smoke. You're getting basically all the poisons, and some of these poisons can actually cause cancer. So besides this, what are, what, what are the other risk factors? So I divided into two columns here. The, 
Okay, the risk factor on the, on the left here, okay, this is nothing you can do, this is you. You can't change the fact that you're aging. You can't change your parents. Some say can, but it's not the same. You can't change the fact who you are, your race. Okay, this is nothing that you can do about, okay? But this is something you can do about on this column, okay? Smoking, okay? Um, I think the message is, can't be stronger for people not to smoke, not only lung cancer, it can also cause bladder cancer, prostate cancer. Obesity, you're getting too obese, you have a higher mm -hmm. chance of getting cancer. Um, diet, Western diet is known to cause or to be associated mm -hmm. with higher chance of cancer. Um, high, daily, um, high daily content, cheese, oily stuff, okay, can predispose mm -hmm. you to prostate cancer. Infections, inflammations, yes, those can uh, cause higher risk of cancer as well. Okay, how do you know you have prostate cancer? I mean, okay, um, often there's no warning signs at all. Okay, the title of this talk is about warning signs for prostate problem, but a lot of the time there's no warning signs and you don't feel anything. A lot of the time people diagnosed with prostate cancer, the first thing they say that, I, I'm totally fine, I just retired and uh, I play golf three days a week, I run marathon, and why am I still getting uh, prostate cancer? Often you don't have pros uh, symptoms. Um, because we are dealing with early stage prostate cancer. Okay, when you have symptoms like back pain, you can't pass urine at all, or you have blood in your urine, we are dealing with late stage cancer, and, uh, and luckily we are not seeing a lot of these patients nowadays. And the cancer that we are dealing with are early prostate cancer, and a small, can small volume cancer within the prostate that we can still cure. About two thirds of the patients with prostate cancer nowadays have what we call early stage prostate cancer. But there are people who do have symptoms, okay? Urinary symptoms we talk about, and uh, these are very, very common, and we call them non-specific. They are not specific for prostate cancer. It could be, it could be just in associations, and uh, you have this uh, symptoms anyway, and you go to see a doctor, and uh, because of that, you were diagnosed with uh, something else like prostate cancer. Okay, the symptoms could be uh, frequency, you need to pass urine very frequently, urgency, there's a, a lot of urge, huh? a lot of high tide, people call it, and you need to pass urine very frequently. Your urine flow has been uh, slower, or the strength is not there anymore, you feel like you can't completely empty your bladder, or you need to wake up quite often at night to pass urine. These are quite common symptoms affecting men, okay? Um, and uh, it doesn't mean that you have prostate cancer, okay? It means that you have some urinary symptoms and you need to be assessed. It doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's pointing to prostate cancer or even benign prostate enlargement, okay? So these symptoms can be due to all the three problems affecting, pro affecting the prostate that I mentioned about, the infections, the benign enlargement, or sometimes it can uh, cause a cyst with prostate cancer. When you get pain uh, at the back or you get very tired, uh, these are really late, st really late stage cancer if uh, this is caused by prostate, and luckily we are not seeing a lot of this uh, nowadays. So if there's no symptoms causing prostate cancer, how do you know or how do you suspect you may have prostate cancer? Uh, a lot of the time, um, we don't, okay? But the only thing that gives it away is your age and your family history, okay? If you have very strong family history, your father has prostate cancer, your grandfather has prostate cancer, and your brother has prostate cancer, that means there's a real likelihood that you may get prostate cancer, um, especially if they get prostate cancer at a younger age, huh? uh, probably uh, 40 to 50, and uh, then our suspicion will be high. Um, the other... Um, way that uh, most people diagnose with prostate cancer nowadays is through a blood test called PSA. Okay, this is not uh, part of Singapore Authority. A lot of men in the PSA, working in PSA has PSA done. Okay, so you have abnormal PSA, uh, this is prostate specific antigen, a blood test pointing to abnormality in the prostate, or you have what we call abnormal uh, examination of the prostate when you come to see a doctor for urinary symptoms. That um, give rise to the suspicions that you may have prostate cancer. Um, it's uh, important to point out that uh, we don't advocate or we don't recommend um, 
population screening for PSA, for example, people who are young, who are less than 50, for example, are totally well, uh, who have no family history to go for a PSA uh, screening. Okay? So it can cause a lot of anxiety and uh, it may do more harm than good. At the moment, we don't recommend uh, PSA screening for, air symptom or for people who have no symptoms, but people who are elderly who have symptoms, yes, PSA can be very useful. Okay, when you have any suspicions for prostate cancer, the next thing to do is to do a biopsy. A biopsy means that taking some tissue from the prostate and send it for a test. This is the only way we can diagnose prostate cancer, not by doing a blood test, not by doing any, any scanning. There's no way at the moment that we can see a small prostate cancer through scanning ultrasound or CT scan. It's still by biopsy. Okay? If you're diagnosed with prostate cancer, then we have to go on to find out uh, how extensive the cancer has become, and I'm going to talk a little bit more on that. So PSA is actually a substance produced by the prostate okay, to liquefy the semen. Okay? Actually, um, the whole function is for reproduction, okay? for you to, uh, to have a baby to conceive. So when you are out of the reproduction age, beyond the age of 60, the function of the prostate is actually quite redundant, okay? if the, the way you see it. Um, it's actually a reproduction organ. Um, PSA of more than four is considered abnormal, but uh, more and more we know that uh, even a PSA of less than four can also point to suspicion of prostate cancer as well. What causes the PSA to go up? Okay, PSA is good to indicate there's something wrong in your prostate, but it's not good enough to tell us exactly what is wrong with your prostate. All these three conditions I mentioned about, infections, enlargement of the prostate, and prostate cancer can give rise to increased PSA level. Of course, the extent of the PSA uh, abnormality may point to one uh, than the other. If the PSA is in the region of hundreds, for example, okay, very, very high, then most likely it's going to be prostate cancer. The PSA is just borderline between four to six, for example, and uh, you have a big prostate, it can be due to benign enlargement of prostate. So if your PSA is abnormal, I'm sure in the, in the audience, a lot of you have uh, your PSA level. Um, so what do you do next? I think the first thing to do is to consult a urologist so that we can interpret the abnormal PSA according to your own circumstances, okay? according to your own profile. The first thing we ask is, is there any things that point to prostate cancer? Okay, the, the thing that points to prostate cancer is your age. Okay? So you have a 35 year old man, because you're going to buy insurance and your GP for screening purposes do a PSA, and your PSA is unfortunately 2.9 or 2.6 or some, something, and you're really worried, it's unlikely you have prostate cancer based on your age profile. We may just want to keep an eye on you rather than to go something more drastic than that. So your age is important. Your age is 75, your PSA is 4.9, for example. Um, and you have a family history, and uh, your PSA level is uh, at the higher range, uh, we may have to do a biopsy for, for, I mean, for this group of patients. And also we ask for symptoms. We ask for family history. Family history, as I say, is very important. It doesn't mean that um, the cancer is passed down from family to family. It just means that for you, your risk is higher. If you have, for example, one affected first degree relative, like your brother, uh, your uncle, your risk is twice. If you have three affected first degree relative, more than 10 times the risk. Okay? And uh, at the same setting, we will do a physical examination to fill your prostate to see if there's any abnormality. Some prostate cancer can be felt if uh, it arises from the periphery of the prostate okay? or is very late stage. Okay? So based on the assessment, then uh, we'll, we would uh, treat you accordingly. If you think that this is an infection, especially if you're young and you have symptoms, we will treat you with antibiotics and then we may recheck your PSA and this is probably what you need. Okay, if this is infection, your PSA will come down and this is just what you need. You do not require a biopsy. Okay, if this is due to benign enlargement of the prostate, uh, we may treat you for that condition, especially if you have a lot of symptoms. Your urine flow is slow. We will give you medications to treat, to shrink your prostate, for example, and to treat your symptoms. But if you suspect that you have cancer, based on 
all the, um, the, the information that we gather, then we would recommend a prostate biopsy. Okay? A prostate biopsy is done through the rectum under some local anesthesia. Okay? You will hear, you probably can, you will hear from your friends that this is probably the worst experience they have. Um, some people tolerate it very well, some people totally hate it. As you can imagine, if you have a, what we call a probe in your rectum and through the probe you biopsy your prostate, um, usually it's not, a very, it's not a painful procedure, but it can be very uncomfortable. Okay? You have something inside your rectum, it's, um, it's not uh, comfortable to say the least. Okay, the thing that uh, we have to, uh, to mention is if you do a prostate biopsy, there's a chance of infection because the rectum can be, can be um, full of bacteria. Okay? We can minimize the risk, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, zero. There's always 2 to 3% risk of infection. If that happens, that can be quite serious. And risk of bleeding and risk of pain. Okay? And this is usually what we do when you come for first biopsy. Okay? Nowadays, we have a second option of a, what we call a GA biopsy for people who have a higher risk of infections. For people who cannot tolerate pain, we can do it under general anesthesia and, uh, uh, and we can do it through the skin because it's done through the skin, not through the rectum. The risk of infection is lower, the risk of bleeding is lower. But we reserve this generally for people who require more comprehensive biopsy. Okay? After the first biopsy is negative, then we need a repeat biopsy. This is what we do it. Okay? If it's positive for cancer, we proceed what to call what we call uh, stage your cancer, meaning that you want to know how extensive a cancer is, whether it has spread. Okay? Most, as I said, most of the time, people present with stage 1 and stage 2 prostate cancer, and uh, these are the prostate cancer that has not spread. They are within the prostate. Okay? If you treat the prostate, you will be cured. Okay? And uh, if it's negative, Biopsy is negative, your PSA is high, the possibility, as I say, it may not be cancer because the chance that you have prostate cancer when your PSA is not very high uh, is actually only 20 to 30 percent. Yeah? It could be 60, 70 percent that it's not cancer. And if it's not cancer, it could be the, the other two possibilities. It could be infections or enlargement. And uh, we can follow you up uh, with PSA okay? and uh, monitoring. Okay? And uh, there's also a chance that uh, the biopsy may have missed the cancer. So we may have to repeat a biopsy. And if we repeat a biopsy, usually we do a more comprehensive biopsy under anesthesia. Okay? Occasionally, we may also want to do an MRI of the prostate, okay? if the first biopsy is negative, to see whether there's something that we miss. Okay? But we generally do this after the first biopsy because MRI eye of the prostate is not cheap, okay? So it's positive for cancer, you're going for treatment, okay? I'm not talking about treatment, the next speaker would be covering treatment, various treatment for prostate um, cancer. So, but I just want to show two slides. Most cancer can be beaten, okay? And there are various forms of treatment, ranging from just keeping an eye on it, to surgery, to uh, radiation treatment, and all of these are quite established treatment to cure prostate cancer. Okay, this is my last slide. Just a very general slide, okay, not only for prostate cancer, for most other cancers nowadays. Um, most cancer can be cured in the vast majority of patients because we are detecting them earlier and earlier. And the other message is most cancer can be prevented, okay? So for the younger audience or even uh, the older audience, the easier things to do, stop smoking, you prevent quite a few cancers that can arise, okay, from lung to the colon to the kidney to the prostate. Healthy diet, not too oily, not too salty, help your sunlight, exercise, and keep yourself happy. And uh, you can prevent some of the most dreadful cancers that come about. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>